We continue our series of interviews here at the Consumer Protection Conference and we are now speaking with Mr. Gregor Posniak, Secretary General of Association of Mutual Insurance and Insurance Cooperatives in Europe. Welcome to Bucharest. Thank you very much. It's good to be back. Welcome to our conference. I suppose it's your first edition. It's the first edition of this conference, but I remember fondly the 2008 commission, um, conference by SEOPS on Solvency 2, where I was a speaker already and I enjoyed being there. Nice memories, we are nice glad. Nice memories indeed. <laughs> okay, Mr. Bosniak, what are the advantages of a mutual insurance company? The mutual business model is based on the fact that the uh, policyholders, the client of the mutual insurer, are the owner of the company, are together the owners of the company, which has two consequences. Firstly, the interests of the company are automatically aligned with the interest of the policyholders, of the clients, and secondly, of the profit or surplus of the mutual, nothing is paid out to external investors, to external shareholders. Whatever the mutual company makes as a surplus at the end of the year is retained for the benefit exclusively of its clients, of its customers. That sounds great, especially for the insured person. <laughs> It does indeed. The status of the insured person, the status of the policyholder, is a special one in the mutual or cooperative insurance business model. Why do some countries have a strong tradition with the mutual insurance, while in others the system is uh, not so popular, let's say? Um, Insurance actually started on a mutual basis. The origins of insurance, mutual insurance is not just a modern alternative, it is the origin of insurance. In some countries though, it has um, been forgotten or suppressed or at times uh, of change have rolled over it. In some countries there were strong sectors, but then in a, um, in a wave of demutualizations, old mutual companies were turned into um, public limited companies or into listed companies. In other countries like yours, for example, in Romania, um, the laws uh, after 1945 did not provide for mutual insurance, although collective schemes for the provision of services or for certainty of the population were there. So after the turn in the early 1990s, some thought that collective solidarity solutions were not so popular. In uh, Poland, in Hungary, for example, legislation from before Second World War had survived. So there are mutual companies in uh, Poland, in Hungary, in uh, Bulgaria, for example, the trade union movement has a cooperative insurer which has a growing market share. I'll be talking about this at the conference later today. Okay, let's not develop everything right now. <laughs> so, in the case of Romania, it was the political reason to say so. Uh, are there any disadvantages of this mutual system that um, determined other countries to renounce it? Um, Disadvantages uh, may be in the perception sometimes, unfortunately, of politicians or of supervisors. In some traditions, in some countries, in some markets, mutuals are regarded as weak or not proper businesses. I have to speak against that, of course, um, because it's, it's a joint duty of the mutual sector and the supervisor and the uh, legislator to subject mutuals also to prudential requirements and to requirements so that uh, they are as strong and that they are full value players on the markets. Of course, there's one particular challenge to mutuals. They can't go to the market for finance. They are not the subsidiary of a large Western insurer and can go to the mother company and they don't want to be listed on the stock exchange and have external shareholders. So they are capital raising, the source of their capital may be a bit slower than for others, their possibility to, to finance themselves. They have to build up their reserves from their own surpluses. So sometimes it requires for new mutuals a bit of patience by the market, by the supervisor, until they can achieve their critical mass. So uh, from the viewpoint of some, there can be a disadvantage, but I'm not seeing that as a disadvantage. I'm just seeing that as a specificity 
of the mutual model, which requires recognition or acknowledgement by the legislator, by the supervisor, that they have their particularities, that they have their limitations in external financing, so they can build up their capital from inside, because mutuals, in contrast to what was said earlier today, mutual insurers are profit-making, are surplus-making. The difference is what they do with their profit. They don't pay them to outside, uh, to outside shareholders, they don't pay uh, out their surpluses to foreign shareholders, as is very common in the Eastern European markets. The profits stay in the country for the benefit of their domestic customers. On the long term, is an advantage to... It, it's an advantage on the long term, just in line, in congruence with the long term character of the mutual and cooperative business model. They don't have to look at the next quarterly profits or at the balance sheet at the end of the year. They can, for the benefit and with the acknowledgement of the supervisor and the legislator, they can run longer term strategies, longer term investments, sustainable models, etc., for the benefit of their member policyholders. I have only one last question, especially regarded to the theme we, we approach today at the conference. How, the mutual, how do the com mutual companies solve their customer protection uh, issues? Let's turn it the other way around. Customer protection, as we heard earlier, sometimes is in conflict or positive conflict in uh, competition with the need of the company to have a high profit at the end of the year because some customer protection measures or approaches cost money or go against a superior profit target. This is internalized in the mutual. The mutual's owners and members are its policyholders. So the model as such is one that protects the own policyholder because it's the owner. And one of the big conflicts of interest, for example, when um, calculating uh, profit sharing on life insurance contracts is how much do we have to retain for the safety of our policyholders and the sustainability of the company and how much do we pay back to be attractive to our clients. For the mutual, that's an identity of purpose because the policyholders are the owners of the company and if we retain our surplus, it's for the benefit of the owners. Who in, are mutuals, the in a mutual system, one may say that the consumer protect themselves. <laughs> Uh, the, the consumers protect themselves or the company by doing something for its owners automatically protects its own clients.